Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's this show on HGTV, which I swear I never, ever watch. Okay, maybe my eyes peek over the edge of my the book I'm trying to read while my wife is watching it. Helps with sermon stories at least, right? But the name of this show is Forever Home, and it stars Jonathan and Drew Scott, aka the Property Brothers. And in this show, they find families that are living in a home that they want to stay in, but it needs some big changes to transform the house into their forever home. And that's when all of the, the demo and updates happen. They work with the family to find out their, their needs and, and what kind of aesthetic they like. They ask them about their dreams and hopes for the future so they can plan accordingly. And then they make the plan, execute it, and get all of the details absolutely perfect. Then they can really call it their forever home. I got curious and I live with three girls who have limitless opinions about stuff like this. So I asked, what would your dream home that we would stay in forever look like? And here are some of the answers I got back. It would be blue and white on the outside. It would have an open concept kitchen, dining room, living room. It would have an indoor swimming pool a spa-like master ensuite bathroom, vaulted ceilings with exposed wood beams, and the real kicker, a pineapple bush. Now, I don't know who's paying for this, because in Juno, I just described like a $3 million house. But that would be our perfect forever home. Every detail exactly the way we want it. Thing is, on that show, all the details rarely, rarely end up being perfect. Part of the drama is the unexpected repairs that have to happen and the family having to choose what part of their perfect dream house they are willing to compromise on. Sometimes you're left wondering what happened to the entire upper level of their house. It goes the whole episode untouched. I guess it wasn't part of their forever. Now I keep doing forever in air quotes because that has to be one of the biggest compromises that they make on the show. Forever. I mean, what is that? really mean when we use it? Do the families on this show really think that they and their ancestors are going to be living in this home until the end of time? They have to know how easily disaster could strike and take that home away from them, or how quickly times change and families grow in ways that you weren't expecting. We have completely ravaged what that word forever means. What it really means is something that has no end. It's eternal. If you say something is going to last forever, you are telling me that it will never go away, never change. And that's not what we mean when we say forever. Usually when we say forever, we're, we're just talking about as far as we can see ahead into the future. For most of us, that would be the end of our lives. Some really futuristic people out there might be able to plan out to the end of their children's lives or maybe even their grandkids' lives. But I don't think most people think more than two or three generations ahead. And I've always wondered if God's people, Israel, struggled with the concept of what forever really means too. Because God made a lot of forever promises to them. Just listen to this one he, uh, that God made to King David in 2 Samuel 7. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offsprings to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod yielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. In case you weren't counting, the Lord talks about the forever concept at least four different times there. The people must have been giddy. We're going to have kings from David's line who are going to be ruling on Israel's throne forever. That means we're going to have a home here on earth for us and our kids and our kids' kids as far as we can look into the future. And things look perfect. All the details of God's plan and promise played out perfectly while David was king and getting rid of Israel's most pesky enemies. Then his son Solomon took over and they enjoyed wealth and prosperity they had never seen before. I mean, rulers from other places came to check out Solomon's splendor. Ah, they must have thought, 
This is what God was promising. This is what he meant. Then things started to look not quite as rosy. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, couldn't hold the country together and a revolt led the, the ten northern tribes of Israel away from the rest. But there's still one of David's descendants on the throne in Judah, right? But if you fast forward to not even 500 years after God made his forever promise to David, Israel doesn't have a king anymore. They, they don't even have a home anymore. The northern rebellious tribes were destroyed by Assyria, and Judah what was carried away into exile in Babylon to the east. What happened? What about, what about God's promise? What, what happened to forever? 500 years is not forever. so It's not even close. So what did it mean that David's kingdom would endure forever? Did God change his mind on that promise? Maybe he changed it to a more human concept of forever, a long time, but definitely one that has an ending. Israel looked around and saw, as far as they were concerned, failure. As far as God's promise depended on human beings to be the ones who fulfilled it and carried it out, it was dead on arrival. The problem wasn't with God or his promise or even his idea of what forever means. The problem is with us and our expectations of forever. Maybe we're like the producers of that Forever Home show. We, we think the concept is cool sounding, but we get that it's not really forever. Because we've all been let down by promises that don't do what they say they will. Juno made international headlines this week, and you know why? We've now had not one, but two adverse reactions to the new coronavirus vaccine. Right here in our own little corner of the North. Professionals and companies promised us that everything would be safe, but now we're not so sure. Politicians promise that things will get back to normal very soon, but what does very soon mean? They say there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but how far away is that light? We are used to making compromises on promises. Maybe we've even come to expect that we can't expect exactly what is promised. You don't even have to look that far to realize that. I mean, how many of your promises have you failed to follow through on? How many times do we force the people we care about to make compromises because we just can't hold up our end of the bargain? Couples promise each other they'll work on their marriage, but each expects the other one to just call it quits before things are better. I promise my daughters I'll be more patient with them next time, but the fact that they apologize for things that aren't even really their fault tells me they only half believe me. So Lord God, forgive us when we hear you make a forever promise and we expect you to make compromises on that promise. We've heard it all before. We, we've been let down so many times. I've even done a lot of the letting down myself. Lord, we come to you today as sinful people living in a sinful world that can only have a broken and twisted view of what forever, of what a forever promise really looks like in real life. There's this detail, though, that makes this forever promise from God pack an extra punch. Before God makes this one-sided deal with David, David was talking about how he really, really wanted to build a beautiful temple. If he was going to accomplish one thing during his reign as king in Israel, that was it. He told his God all about his plans, and he asked for God's blessings, and God's answer was no. David's role is going to be different. He would be a king who was almost always at war protecting God's people, he would have blood on his hands. Instead of letting David do what he wanted, nothing more than to do, God flips the script on his servant. Instead of letting David build a house of worship for God, God was going to build a forever house for David. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Only an eternal God can keep a forever promise. People are too short-sighted. Our idea of what forever means has been wrecked by sin. But if anyone can make a promise and say that when he makes good on that promise, its blessings will go on and on into eternity, it's God. He makes those kinds of promises to David, to you and me, because he's concerned about your forever. And now we're not just talking about your life's legacies. We're not just looking two or three generations ahead. I really mean forever. God makes forever promises about you and me because he cares about what happens to you now and forever. And if only an eternal God can keep a forever promise, 
then it makes sense why God puts so much emphasis on himself before he makes his promise to David. These are verses 8 to 11. Now then tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will, I will provide a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning. And I have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. God sets the stage for his forever promise by reminding David of who got him to where he was. God was the one who chose David from all of his brothers and anointed him to be the next king of Israel. The Lord was the one who led David to victory against his enemies. God was the one who made all of that happen. And now that same God was the one making new promises. Do you think you'd be able to keep them? Even when things seemed bleak and hopeless, God's promise endured. David's family line continued quietly from son to son, even while they were passed around by different nations and tyrants. The Persians replaced the Babylonians and allowed some of the Jews to go back to their own land. The Greeks booted the Persians out, and then the Romans came along and took control from the Greeks. Judah, now called Judea, remained a state in someone else's empire. David's throne sat there, empty. But the promise was still there. As Israel was losing hope, great David's greater son, Jesus, was born. His mother, Mary, and her husband, Joseph, were both descended from David. That little baby boy was David's heir. He was the one who David's, who would establish David's throne forever. And there he is, born in a stable as a carpenter's son. The promise was fulfilled. Israel must have thought that David and Solomon and their sons were going to be the building blocks God was going to use to make his forever home for them. But they weren't the ones that God was talking about. God was building his forever kingdom for his people with David's son, Jesus. With his innocent life, Jesus would give the perfection he demands from all people, you and me included. With his blood poured out on the cross, he would pay the price that sins deserve, death. And with his resurrection from that death, Jesus would hold out the same promise to us that the Father held out to David, the promise of a forever home. And that promise is a reality for you through faith in Jesus. You are a citizen of God's kingdom. He rules in your hearts through faith, and now you are part of the real Israel. You are one of God's people ruled over by the king that he promised would sit on David's throne forever, Jesus. This place that you now call home, it will last forever. You can never outgrow it. You will never, it'll never need to be updated and brought into this century to be relevant. It really is forever and ever. And it will stay that way because your Savior is the one sitting on the throne, David's son, but David's Lord. And you will be his own forever. Amen. And now this peace of God that goes beyond all understanding, it will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.